Season three, episode one, Herschel. Oh, no. So basically, this season starts off pretty interestingly. There must have been a time skip or something because Lori is a lot more pregnant than we saw her at the end of season two. Um, but they were going from house to house or something, looking for a place to hunker down and call home. Um, and it wasn't working out until they came across this prison yard. And so they kind of spent the episode clearing it out, finding places in the prison to stay. You know, all that good jazz. But, um, you know, while they were walking through the hallways and stuff, a walker was apparently still alive and stuck up on Herschel and bit his leg. <laughs> I don't know why the walkers play dead. I mean, it's called the walking dead, but they're, they're mindless things. Or are they smarter? I don't know. Why would it play dead? What reason would it have to play dead that long? Just sitting there waiting for someone to eventually come along to bite his leg. So <laughs> Herschel got bit and they had to, they're having to hack off his leg pretty much. And it was, oh, it was unbearable. I can't stand seeing the elderly get injured. <laughs> uh, I can't stand seeing anyone get injured, but the elderly and children especially. <laughs> Aside from that though, there really wasn't, um... Any major character-driven uh, plot points so far in the episode, it was mostly just action trying to clear out the prison. Um, Rick and Laurie are kind of arguing and having a little spat, and Laurie thinks that her baby that she's pregnant with is dead or something, and that it'll, you know, come back zombified and basically eat her from the inside out, which would be super creepy and horrifying, and woo, that's gonna be... Yikes. Maggie and Glenn are still being cute, though, and they had this little hilarious moment where they bumped into each other while they were searching the prison and like freaked each other out for half a second. I don't know why, but I thought that was really funny. <laughs> um, uh, Carol and Daryl had a quick little moment. I think Carol's trying to flirt with him, but there's not much going on there. Just a little moment where her back was sore or something from firing the gun, so Daryl gave her a massage. I don't know. She's trying something. Uh -huh. I don't think it'll work on Daryl, though. I think he'll see through it. Um, because Daryl's real. Uh, T-Dog is, T I wanted to talk about T-Dog. You know, he hasn't had anything major since, like, the blood poisoning at the very beginning of the last season. He's been super duper quiet and not very busy for a long time. So that's kind of making me worried about him. Like, are the writers going to see him as dead weight and eventually kill him off or something? So... I really hope that's not true because I like T-Dog. He's one of my favorites. I don't know who I want to go next. I think I like pretty much everyone left. Um, oh yeah, except Andrea because she's still, I mean, she's still alive. She's with uh, that uh, lady with the, with like the zombie pets. She like has them as pets, but Andrea's with her. She seems sick and the next episode is called Sick, so it's probably going to be about her. Just please no more vomit stuff. I've already seen enough vomiting. I can't tolerate it <laughs> um but yeah next episode season three episode two sick and thankfully there was no vomit this episode <laughs> ah so that's very very good because i do not like that stuff um but anyways um this episode was mostly about taking care of herschel you know continuing to stop the bleeding, trying to find medical supplies. You know, Carl went off on his own again without permission and then acted like a baby when he got in trouble for it. Of course. That little brat apparently did not learn his lesson about Dale. It was his fault. Shane was not right to tell him that it wasn't his fault. Oh my gosh, that was the most irritating thing. But anyways, the entire episode mostly centered around Rick and the group sort of keeping watch over these prisoners as they clean out another cell block for them to stay in. And they sca uh, salvage some food and split it half and half or something. And yeah, there was a lot that went on there. Um, the leader of those prisoners was not stable, so of course Rick had to put him down. And another big guy because he got scratched. I mean, I don't know what, they, what else they could have done, but it had to be done, I guess. Um... Uh, but these other two prisoners, they kept alive because they were begging for their lives and all that. Um, there was a fourth prisoner that got chased off and then eaten by zombies. Um, but overall, I think those two other prisoners are going to be important in the season later. Um, I think one of them may be nice, and then another one may turn out to be evil. I don't know which one. Uh, but it would be cool to have more people join the group. Uh, we haven't had anyone new join the farm gang. Not even Randall. 
that guy that Shane snapped his neck. Um, but anyways, uh, Carol's also trying to practice a C-section. So, because Lori may need one. Um, so Carol is trying to practice that on a walker. And it's gonna be really creepy if this, like, walker baby, like, bursts out of, um, her belly or something. But anyways, overall, there wasn't really much to talk about this episode. Just running and getting some food and supplies, killing some prisoners, keeping some others alive. Uh, more Herschel stuff. It seems like he's finally awake, though, so that's good. And Carl's being a brat, and, I don't know, Lori's impending doom and C-section that she'll need, and... Ooh, 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 that's not gonna be fun when we get to it. Um, but anyways, I think that's about it. See you in the next episode. Oh, oh there's the vomit. Oh, come on. Oh. Season 3, Episode 3. Why didn't they just save it for last episode? It was called Sick. I was prepared for it. Not this time, um... But anyways, this was an episode centered around Andrea and that other chick. I think her name was Michelle. That's what I thought I heard Andrea say, like in the car when they were both blacked out. But this episode is basically they got discovered in the woods and brought to this um, this weird mini civilization. Like they have the place guarded and they're growing food and they have... Lots of people there, like almost a hundred, I if I remember correctly. Um, so they're sort of trying their best to restart civilization, civilization, keeping the place fenced off and fending off the walkers. So that's pretty neat how they're thriving pretty well. But guess who's back? Merle's back. Oh boy! I expected to see him again, but I'm still waiting on Morgan and Dwayne. I'm actually giving up, actually. <laughs> um, but it'd be cool to see them again. But yeah. Merle's back, so hopefully he'll get to reunite with Daryl and that little arc will be closed. I gotta stop thinking this is like some kind of cartoon show where all the continued plots get resolved within the season. <laughs> um, but anyways, Merle's there. He found them all and brought them back to the civilization place. So he's... it seems like Merle's in a good position there. Like he has uh, more of a leadership role. Like he's one of the top people there. And of course, yes, he is missing the hand. Um, he has this cool, like, metal nub thing with a knife on the end of it, or sword? I don't know. I didn't get too good of a look at it, but it's cool metal replacement arm to cover up his nub. <laughs> um, but we didn't really get a look at how Rick and the gang is doing back at the prison. It was kind of just completely centered around Andrea and Michelle and Merle. And, um, I don't know if Merle's good or bad now. Like, did he reform and learn his lesson, or is he still... Just a rotten, rude, bad person. Because um, I couldn't tell. Because it seems like someone else may be the bad guy. Like, he was leading this uh, group and to steal weapons and food and resources from these other people. And he killed them too, of course. So, it seems like he may be the bad guy. I can't tell yet. Probably. Um, but at the end, he sat in this chair in this dark room. And he had, like, all these walker heads in water. And a guy he rescued earlier, I think... So, yeah, I'm definitely getting a bad guy impression. I'll have to see more of him to figure out for sure. He may just be crazy, but, um... He seems like the leader of the whole... The whole place. So, that's not good. That'd be like a dictatorship or something. I don't know. I'm too clueless on what's going on here. It, everything was very vague. There's just this civilization. They bring people there, and that's about it. I guess we'll learn more, though. Um, so yeah, I'll check out the next episode and see you when I watch it. Whew, episode 4 of Season 3. What did I just say a couple episodes ago about T-Dog? I was like, oh man, he, he's not, he hasn't been very busy. He hasn't had much screen time recently. I bet, um, I bet the writers are planning to kill him off because they might see him as dead weight or something. And surprise, surprise, that's exactly what happened this episode. What's even worse is that they completely, like, glossed over his death because Lori also died. Don't get me wrong, I'll get to that later. That scene was still well done. But I'm just upset that T-Dog was kind of brushed under the rug like that. He was one of my favorites. And with the way the characters were asking about Carol, they made it seem like she died too. But I could have sworn I saw her escape. I don't know. Um, don't spoil it though, because if she comes back then I'll be happy. Because we didn't see her die, and usually if a character dies, they want you to know they're dead by having... Tons of gore and blech. Um, but Carol did not have that, so maybe she escaped. Um, that's cool. Um, but as for the episode overall, it was centered around them trying to find a generator to turn off um, this alarm. 
because it was on emergency or something and it was making loud noises, which of course draws in tons of walkers, so they had to get rid of them. Um, so they were getting help from the prisoners to escort them there, um, but they all got split up and had to go their separate ways, and that's how T-Dog died, and Lori died too. She had to get a C-section because the baby was coming and uh, Carol or Herschel weren't around. By the way, Herschel's up and walking again, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, Lori had to die, and it was super sad. That scene was really well done. Her last speech to Carl. Um, that was like one of the first deaths I had to actually look away from for a second. Like, usually I'm pretty tolerant to all this stuff, because I'm like, it's, it's TV. It's all fake, and yada yada yada. Um, but for that one with Lori's screams and just, ugh. It was like almost as bad as, um, when Herschel tried to get the bullet shards out of Carl. Back in season one, it was almost on that level of bad. I was just really shaken up, because that was really unbearable to watch. Uh, but it was super sad, especially Rick's reaction at the end. But overall, this was a pretty intense and pretty filled up episode. They had lots to do, they had lots to get through, lots of plot points. Ugh, I wonder how they're going to recover from all this, because that was, that was horrifying. Um, but I'm excited to see what happens next. Um... Hopefully less Andrea. <laughs> I know she was only there for a couple minutes this episode, but please, less Andrea. Um, see you guys next time. Season 3, Episode 5. This was another calm episode that allowed us to relax after the massive storm that was Episode 4. Um, but basically, uh, with Rick, he's kind of mourning the loss of uh, Lori by going completely mad. And he's just walking through the halls, slaughtering any walkers he can find. Um, and I guess he was looking for Lori's corpse or something, because he wanted to put her down himself, and he didn't know Carl did it, maybe? That's what I'm, that's what I'm predicting. Um, but it seems like a walker came in and ate her, because there was a really fat one, so Rick got angry and stabbed it, like, 50 times. Um, then there was a ring on the phone. Um, don't know what that's about, but after Rick picked up the phone and said hello, it cut off. What a cliffhanger, oh boy. <laughs> um... But anyways, I am curious about who that could have been, because I thought, I didn't know, well, I mean, obviously the prison has a generator, but I don't know who from the outside could be calling. Maybe it's someone from the community, like Andrea, or Michelle, Michon, Michon, I've never heard a name like Michon before, but I think they keep saying Michon when referring to her. Um... Or it could be Andrea. I don't know. I'm, I'm mixed up. I'm confused. But we did get a little half and half episode. Half of it at the prison. The other half at the community. Hopefully they can meet up so they can stop focusing on Andrea a lot. <laughs> uh, but in the community there was something interesting. Uh, Michonne was ca causing a bit of trouble and she left of course. But towards the end we found out that they have like these events. These walker games or something. It's staged because they pull out the teeth so the walkers can't bite. Um, but Merle and this other dude were wrestling, so that was pretty interesting to figure out. And I can see where Andre is coming from and that it might teach people that walkers aren't dangerous or something, which is not the right thing to know because they are dangerous. And the leader guy is like, no, it's to teach them not to be afraid or something. So I'm kind of conflicted there because I think they're both right. Um, they won't be afraid and they won't think the walkers are dangerous. So that'll be kind of... Ugh, that's kind of a ugh thing to teach. I mean, they're kind of get these people are getting too cozy in this community, pretty much. So you never know how they'll be able to handle things when things go wrong again. Oh boy, I can't wait for that to happen because I I know it will. Um, but anyways, Daryl and Maggie went out to find some formula and baby supplies to take care of the baby, so that's nice. Um, Daryl is mourning the loss of Carol. I saw him place a flower on the grave or something. So maybe she did die, I don't know. Um, maybe Carol's calling the prison from somewhere? Yeah, because Carol's the only one that would know, right? Unless there was someone else I can't think of. Um, but it's sad that T-Dog's still gone, sad that Lori's gone, sad to see Rick mourn, but... It was a very calm, relaxing episode this time around. So, can't wait to see what happens next.